The learning objective of the topic is explain the relationship between trends in the reactivity of elements and periodicity. So in the topic 1.7, I've already told you what is periodicity. In this video, we'll be talking about the reactivity of the elements and the trends which we will be seeing along with periodicity. Hello everyone, this is topic 1.8, valence electrons and ionic compounds. This is taken from AP Chemistry College Board. In topic 1.5, which was electronic configuration, I have already told what are valence electrons and core electrons. But in brief, let me tell you here again what are valence electrons. So an atom is composed of a nucleus and electrons revolving around the nucleus. The nucleus contains the protons and neutrons. So here, the inside electrons are called as core electrons and the outermost shell electrons are called the valence electrons. As in definition, valence electrons are in the outermost shell of the atom and are able to interact with other atoms to form chemical bonds. In topic 1.7, I have already talked about the periodic table. A periodic table contains the groups and the periods. The vertical columns are called the groups. In groups, the elements are having the same number of valence electrons. For example, if I'm talking about this group 1A, all these elements are having valence electron as 1. In group 2A, the, these elements are having two valence electrons. So similarly, like for other groups also, all the elements of the same group have same number of valence electrons, except this element, which is helium. For helium, there are two valence electrons, but other elements in the same group are having eight valence electrons. So let's see here that how does a compound being formed. Here sodium atom has 11 electrons. Its configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. So the outermost shell contains the one electron which is 3s orbital. If I'm talking about the chlorine atom, chlorine atom has 7 valence electron because its configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 and 3p5. So this outermost shell has 3s and 3p orbitals. So that is why it has in total 7 electrons. Now this chlorine atom has 7 electrons and sodium atom has 1 valence electron. But all the elements are trying to be stable by having the 8 electrons in its outermost shell. So for example, if I'm talking about sodium, if it loses this one electron, it will have eight electrons at its outermost shell. As for sodium, it would be difficult to gain seven electrons to make the outermost shell eight electrons. So that is why it is easy for sodium to lose one electron. Now this chlorine atom has seven electrons in total as in valence electrons. If it takes one electron from somewhere, it will get eight electrons in, the, in its outermost shell and they become very stable. So that one electron can be taken from sodium. This is called transfer of electron. If one electron from sodium gets transferred to chlorine atom, it will become sodium positive and chlorine negative because sodium has lost one electron. So it will get one positive charge and the chlorine atom has gained one electron. So it will be become chloride ion. So now this positive and negative charges will actually attract each other. And that is why sodium chloride would be formed, which is N, written as NaCl. Here also in electronic configuration, you can see that when Na has one valence electron, it has lost one electron, it becomes Na positive. And this chlorine atom, when it gains one electron, it becomes chloride ion. So this, there is an interaction between this uh, sodium positive and chloride ion. That is why sodium chloride is being formed. So this is an example of ionic compound. The main thing which we need to keep in mind is every atom wants to become stable and that stability can come from having eight electrons in its outermost shell. So to have that configuration, they will either gain electron or they will 
lose the electron. So what is basically ionic compounds? Ionic compounds are the compounds which is made up of ions that form charged particles when an atom or a group of atom gains or loses electrons. For example, here again you can see that initially it was sodium atom and when it loses one electron it becomes sodium positive. Here it was initially chlorine atom and when it gains one electron from sodium it becomes chloride ion. Now there will be interaction between these ions and the compound will be formed which is an ionic compound. So these charged particles are basically forming ionic compounds by gaining or losing the electrons. Similarly, if I talk about potassium atom, this potassium atom can also lose the electron and that electron can be gained by chlorine atom. So another compound which can be formed can be KCl. Similarly, this potassium can also make bond with the bromine atom because potassium can lose one electron and this bromine can accept that electron. So other elements can be formed can be KBr or NaBr. Are, these compounds are also ionic compounds. If I'm talking about second group elements this Mg can actually lose two electrons and here chlorine can accept one electron. So if magnesium is losing two electrons so those two electrons would be gained by the chlorine atom but how that can be formed by the Mg will lose two electrons and then two chlorine atoms will gain the electrons. So here the compound which will be formed will be MgCl2 because magnesium has lost two electrons and chlorine atom can only accept one electron. So two chlorine atoms has to combine with magnesium atom. Similar is the case with calcium and chlorine or you can say calcium and bromine. So the compounds formed will be calcium Cl2 or CaBr2. We can also see that if calcium can lose two electrons, those two electrons can also be gained by oxygen or sulfur. So other compounds which can be formed can be CaO or you can say CaS these compounds can also be formed. Just you need to see that overall the compound should be neutral. That is there should not be any charge which should be left with any element. The elements if they are losing the electrons, same number of electrons should be gained by another element. So this was about the ionic compounds. Now let's see this question. The question is which of the following two elements are most likely to form an ionic bond? The options are potassium and oxygen, sodium and calcium, potassium and bromine. So we need to see that which elements can lose electrons and which elements can gain electrons. So let's see the first option which is potassium and oxygen. So if I'm talking about potassium, potassium can become K positive by losing the electrons and oxygen can uh, gain two electrons to become O2 negative. So the compound which can be formed can be K2O because oxygen is gaining two electrons. So those two electrons can come from two potassium atoms. So this option will be correct because an ionic compound can be formed between potassium and oxygen. Now let's see second option which is sodium and calcium. So sodium can become sodium positive because it can lose one electron and calcium can also lose two electrons to become calcium two positive. So both the elements can actually lose the electrons. There is no other element which can gain the electrons. So this option would be wrong. There cannot be any ionic bond formed between uh, sodium and calcium. Now let's see the third option which is potassium and bromine. So potassium can become potassium positive by losing the electron and bromine can gain the electron to become bromide ion. So an ionic bond can be formed between potassium and bromine. So this option is also correct. 
so the learning objective of the topic was explain the relationship between the trends in the reactivity of elements and periodicity so in this video i talked that how the elements of the same group can make same kind of ionic compounds and the reactivity is also almost the same for a certain group Please like and subscribe to the channel Log Iota and press the bell icon 